Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is actually a continuation of development of GIT. So those who haven't seen those sessions, please do see those sessions so that you will uh, get a continuity for the same. Uh, so in this session, we are going to see how the stomach is developed from the uh, primitive gut tube. Okay, so we have seen that uh, the primitive gut tube is divided into foregut, midgut and hindgut. And we know stomach is a derivative of foregut. So, uh, for the exam, if you are asked to write a, uh, on, a short note on the development of stomach, if you happen to draw all these diagrams, I am sure you will uh, score very good marks in the theory exams. Okay, so stomach as you all know is developed from the foregut, the distal portion of the foregut. So in the beginning actually the foregut will be, the, the entire gut will be just in the form of a tube, a longitudinal tube. Now what happens is towards the lower portion of the foregut there will be a fusiform dilatation. Can you see this fusiform dilatation? So this is actually going to be our stomach. So in the lower part of the foregut there will be a region where it develops uh, or it happens to dilate in the form of a fusiform shape. Okay, so in that region we have the development of stomach. It usually happens between 4th and 5th week. That is the uh, usual time period for the development of stomach. So if you see this tube as it is, we can see that it, it happens in the midline and the, this is the anterior portion and posterior this is the posterior portion okay and we have the right side here and it is the left side here hope this view is clear for you so you, you just imagine a tube and the lower part of the tube it just got dilated and so the tube will be having an anterior portion posterior portion right portion as well as the left portion so this will be the cross section if you just take a cross section and if you have a view this will be the view so I would like to add one important point when you deal with the stomach that is on the right side as well as on the left side you have vagus nerves okay so there is right vagus nerve and there is left vagus nerve in the beginning of development of stomach. So in the initial period when you get the tube in the midline you have the right vagus on the right side this is the right side of the stomach and this is the left side of the stomach right. So uh, the left vagus will be lying on the left side. These are the two possibilities for the vagus nerve to lie on either side of the developing stomach. Now three factors are uh, the reasons or the responsible for the rotation of the stomach or the final adult position of the stomach. So which are the three factors governing the rotation and the adult placement of the stomach? Let's see. So the first reason is the rapid enlargement of the liver. Okay. So first time we know that uh, the liver is actually forming as a small butt from the junction of the foregut and the midgut, especially from the foregut. Okay. So it will be very small butt and it won't actually uh, affect much on the development of the stomach. But as the liver enlarges, it will affect the development on the rotation and the final placement of the stomach. I will come to it in detail. The next one is the omental bursa or the lesser sac which is lying behind the stomach. We know that in the abdominal cavity there are mainly two sacs. One is greater sac and one is lesser sac. Lesser sac is a very small pouch lying behind the stomach and all the remaining uh, part which you see in the abdominal cavity is that of the greater sac. That is the easiest way to uh, remember greater sac and lesser sac. Then the third one is rotation by the active growth process. Okay, so these are the three factors which are responsible for the adult position of the stomach. So first we will see, first we have uh, seen that the st stomach is actually having a fusiform dilatation and there is right border, left border, anterior surface and posterior surface. Now it will undergo a rotation of 90 degree. So before that, uh, let's see what are the uh, supporting factors for the stomach. We know that this is the anterior abdominal wall and this is the posterior abdominal wall. These are the kidneys. Okay. So we know that this is the stomach and the stomach is actually suspended from the anterior body wall as well as from the posterior body wall by the peritoneal folds. You call it as uh, mesentery but when it is connected to the stomach 
we actually rename this mesentery as dorsal and ventral mesogastrium. So it is the mesentery which is suspending the stomach. Hence, you name it as dorsal mesogastrium and ventral mesogastrium. So ventral mesogastrium suspends the stomach from the anterior abdominal wall and dorsal mesogastrium suspends the stomach from the posterior abdominal wall. So till now the stomach is lying in the midline as a fusiform dilatation. Now what happens is we have two important structures developing within the dorsal and ventral mesogastrium. In the ventral mesogastrium we have the liver bud developing and in the dorsal mesogastrium we have the spleen developing. Okay, so these are the two important structures which are going to uh, determine the final adult position of the stomach. So what happens? We have uh, mentioned uh, uh, the first factor as the rapid enlargement of the liver, isn't it? So as the liver enlarges, so liver was first in the midline, as the liver enlarges, this will actually try to occupy the right side and this will push the stomach. So as it moves towards the right side, it will push the stomach to the left aspect, isn't it? So that is the reason why this ventral mesogastrium will be now going to this position. Previously it was like this because of the rapid growth of the liver. With the movement of the liver, the ventral mesogastrium will be pushed towards the right side. So that is actually what is happening here also. Okay, this is the schematic representation. So that is actually uh, around 90 degrees. So the rotation is about at 90 degree. So what will happen? What are the changes happening to the stomach? Uh, we know that there is a ventral border here, ventral surface here. There is a dorsal surface here. So when you compare the ventral surface and dorsal surface, we can see that the dorsal surface is actually growing at a larger rate compared to the ventral surface. So there is a bulging on the dorsal surface and this aspect is actually moved a bit to the right. That is the reason why we have a concavity on the ventral aspect. So since it undergoes a 90 degree rotation, what happens now? The ventral aspect will come and lie. So this is the ventral aspect. This will come and lie on the right side. So now the right is the previous ventral aspect and what happens to the dorsal aspect with this rotation you can just imagine you can just imagine these colors this is the first tube if it rotates like this what happens this was previously on the ventral aspect when it rotates 90 degree axially this will come and lie on the right side likewise the tube of the stomach where the ventral surface will just come and lie on the right side okay so now the ventral aspect or the lesser curvature the future lesser curvature will be on the right side and the dorsal uh, aspect which is forming the greater curvature of the stomach will be on the left side so what happened to our right and left vagus nerve the right vagus nerve will also rotate and the left vagus nerve will also rotate anteriorly. So the right will go to the posterior aspect and left will go to the anterior aspect. That is the 90 degree rotation what is happening here. So what happens? The left vagus nerve will be forming the anterior vagal trunk because now the left vagus is lying anteriorly. Previously it was here. When it rotates like this 90 degree, you can just imagine, right? Here it was right vagus nerve and left vagus nerve. When it undergoes 90 degree rotation, it comes like this. So that the left vagus nerve, which was on the left side, will be coming anteriorly. And it is known as anterior vagal trunk. And the right vagus nerve will be going to the posterior aspect. And it will be known as the posterior vagal trunk. So the anterior vagal trunk will be actually supplying the antero superior portion and the posterior and the posterior vagal trunk or the right vagus nerve will be supplying the posterior inferior portion of the stomach and this is our um, final adult shape of the stomach we have the lesser curvature with a concavity and the greater curvature uh, with a convexity and this is the uh, cardiac end and this is the pyloric end these are the two ends of the stomach and there is a slight ventral push to this uh, pyloric end anteriorly. So previously the tube was like this with a slight ventral push what happens is 
instead of the anterior and so previously we called this as anterior surface and posterior surface with a slight ventral push now you call this as antero superior and postero inferior that is the reason why we are not uh, calling the surfaces of the stomach plainly as anterior and posterior with a slight ventral push of the lower end now the stomach will be like having a plane like this so that the anterior surface is known as antero superior and the posterior surface is known as postero inferior surface now uh, with the development of the liver in the ventral mesogastrium the ventral mesogastrium is divided into two sets that is the part which is lying between the stomach and the liver you call this as lesser omentum okay lesser omentum and the part which is lying between the liver and the anterior abdominal wall that will be actually differentiated as falciform ligaments and falciform ligaments and coronary ligaments okay so that is what is happening to the ventral mesogastrium the ventral mesogastrium is actually getting differentiated with the development of liver within the ventral mesogastrium likewise for the dorsal mesogastrium with the development of spleen in it uh, the dorsal mesogastrium is redefined as the part which is lying between the stomach and the spleen you call it as gastrosplenic ligament gastrosplenic ligament and the part which is lying between the spleen and the posterior abdominal wall you call this as leno renal ligament okay leno renal ligament leno means spleen and here it is the kidney so it is reflected onto the kidney which is lying on the posterior abdominal wall so this uh, part of the dorsal mesogastrium is known as leno renal ligament and we know that uh, the splenic vessels are actually running through the leno renal ligament so this is the aorta from where you have the renal vessels and you have the uh, splenic artery running through the leno renal ligament so that is how the ventral mesogastrium and dorsal mesogastrium is getting modified with the development of liver and spleen in it so the rapid growth of the liver so the factors once again the rapid enlargement of the liver then the omental bursa so where is the omental bursa it is here it is just posterior to the stomach isn't it so this is the ventral uh, this is the lesser sac which is lying just posterior to the uh, stomach and this will actually which it was slightly here and it will be shifting to the left aspect and finally it will growing down so that you get the a part of it in the fold of the great omentum i'll be dealing with uh, the peritoneal folds in the coming sessions when we talk about the gross anatomy of the stomach then you know the rotation of the uh, stomach the axis along the axis along the longitudinal axis that is mainly again due to the rapid growth of the dorsal uh, part of the stomach compared to the ventral aspect because the dorsal aspect is having a higher rate of growth compared to the ventral aspect now talking about the glands of the stomach we have the gastric glands developing during the third month then the oxyndic and cymogen cells developing in the fourth month and the renin starting function by around fifth month so this is what is happening uh, when you deal with the development of stomach that is it starts uh, from fourth week the glands the gastric glands by third month oxyndic and zymogen cells by fourth month and the functioning of renin by fifth month so you have to remember these uh, period as well now if you want to talk about one of the anomaly which affects the stomach you can talk about the congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis so congenital means it will be there, uh, it will be there um, with birth then hypertrophy means it is the growth of the circular muscles at the pyloric end of the stomach okay so that is hypertrophic pyloric stenosis usually it uh, will be presenting between 2 weeks to 2 months of period soon after birth uh, starting from 2 weeks to 2 months the child will be uh, presenting with progressive vomiting that is the uh, classical uh, symptom with which the patient the, uh, the child will be presenting and uh, usually it's said that boys are more commonly affected than girls so that's about the development of stomach in a nutshell uh, hope you have understood it uh, so it is 90 degree rotation and the differential growth of the posterior 
aspect or the dorsal aspect of the stomach then the two important points you have to know is uh, one is the change in position of the right and left vagus nerve the right vagus nerve will go to the posterior and the left vagus nerve will come to the anterior that is the reason why left vagus is known as the anterior vagal trunk and the right vagus is known as the posterior vagal trunk so hope you have understood thanks for watching